How's it going? Hello, hello, everybody. Glad you guys could make it and join us today. Who is excited for this? I know I am. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I believe all of the runners are indeed ready to go. I think we can start in just a minute. Um, so if uh, all is well, we can go ahead and start with the countdown here. Get this, get this kicked off. Uh, all right, I can I can go ahead and start with that. So, without further ado, uh, on go. Three, two, one, go. Good luck to our runners. Good luck to our runners, and we are off. This is so exciting. I'm I'm really excited. It's actually going to yeah. The whole marathon is really going to be really good. We got some good games coming. Uh, good runners, and this race especially too. A nice way to kick everything off and uh everybody in chat if you want to first things first give a give a ton of love to stray bars for setting this all up he did a ton of work more than i'll ever know <laughs> and uh we we really appreciate it stray thank you for everything definitely definitely he's put in so much work sacrificed so much sleep definitely deserves a round of clappers yeah absolutely So series station is, is pretty standard. You're going to be seeing this a lot if you stick around for the entire marathon, which you should, or as much as possible. It's such and, a wonderful uh, blue color. I love it. <laughs> Good, I'm glad we'll be seeing it oh, yeah. so much. Non-stop. These runners are all going to be going for the 47. Cut the oats, so... Yeah, so series series is is uh, interesting. A lot of players really do not like series station, mostly because of the amount of RNG that that can screw you over. You can get really bad steam patterns. Um, you know, there's some patterns in that very last room there where there's an unavoidable steam, which is just really unfortunate. Um, you know, again, and it's just you know just can waste a few seconds, and it's just really annoying to to, to players. And I think Mishrak came, had a, came out ahead there, 45-11, if I'm not mistaken. So, early lead to Mishrak. And we should also thank Total. Total has also done a, a ton of work. Goop did these, uh, did a lot of our promo work for um, posters and whatnot. I'm not sure who did the layouts. Wild, do you know? Uh, the layouts were made by Kaznode. Very nice. So thanks uh, to Kaznode. Yeah, uh, Super Metroid Runner. Um, Link to the Past Runner. Awesome layout maker. Okay, so we're at the beginning here. They're basically on their way to get more fall. They're going to do a little descent here. Maybe we can tell you a little bit about the runners. So top left, we have Ben Lake, who is a biscuit connoisseur one of the better runners from the UK. Top right is Goop Q, who uh, I'm sure a lot of you know, famous for his Goop Sparks. And bottom left, we have Mock Drums, who actually has the uh, lowest PB of the group right now, in 47s, and second best hair in the community behind EDU. And bottom right, Mishrak, the keeper of Spazer. We'll see if he gets it. I think he's probably going to skip it, but he could surprise us. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Spazer is a really cozy item. It's really nice to have. Um, of course, got to go out of your way. So we'll just be, you know, this is a speed run. So we will be seeing all sorts of different uh, strategies coming out from players. You know, wh whatever they're most comfortable with. Um, <clears throat> Depending on uh, depending on the skill level we, from from each of them, but they are all very very close together in skill. So hopefully we're going to be seeing a really awesome race. As you can see, you know we're only just about like four minutes into this, and they're all within just like a second of each other. So this this is already starting out to look really great. Yeah, and if you've been paying attention to the any percent tournament, I think you know that you can pretty much throw PBs out the window. They don't really mean much when it comes to a race, you know. So. They're just going for consistency. 
trying to finish Stay Alive. Exactly. So we actually, interestingly enough, we see all four racers here going for um, the ledge grabbing climb. Um, no one opting for the wall jump climb. So the ledge grabbing climb um, is definitely a lot easier to master and get consistent uh, than the wall jump climb. So um, we do see, uh, I believe that's Ben taking a little bit of extra time um, to get out of there. But uh, then the rest of our players still chugging right along, or hot on each other's tails. So it looks like Mish is the first to get bombs, and then Goop and Mock Drums are, are uh, Goop and Ben, rather. Right behind him. And we've got Mock coming in now. So like we were talking about, you know, Mock Drums has this, the lowest personal best time of all of them, but <laughs> already at a slight disadvantage. Our three runners out ahead, they're entering the Terminator room. Many of you are probably familiar with it. Yeah, gotta make sure not to arm pump down that slope. You don't want to <laughs> accidentally uh, knock yourself off. Uh, what you do see some, some of these players doing as they're running along is shaking their arm cannon up and down. You're thinking, wow, what are they doing? They got like, you know, just a little bit, are they antsy? They probably are, but that's not the reason for what we call arm pumping. Every single time that the Samus' sprite changes, um, such that her arm cannon goes up, angled up, down, or back to neutral, uh, they are actually shifting their position forward one pixel every single time they do that. And again, Mish, Ben, and Goop coming down the elevator. This is the first major sequence break of the run, where they get early super missiles. It cuts out Spore Spawn completely, which is really, really nice. And I think they're all going to skip the map station. <laughs> <laughs> During the uh, any percent tournament we've got going on, uh, a lot of some of, we've seen some map stations acquired recently in the last couple of matches. Um, really interesting. Not actually part of the, the speed run route, so it's always fun to see. We've been really lucky to have a lot of different runners with a lot of different skill levels coming in, and you know you're going to see things like that, I guess, when you when you make a tournament of that nature. And it, it's been fun. It's been really a lot of fun. All right, if I can jump in here a minute, we've already gotten some donations rolling in. Wonderful. Excellent. That's great. Uh, Got ten dollars from Insane Firebat saying SGDQ go 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 in all caps. Five bucks from Abortion Shark saying I don't have much, but I'll donate whatever I can. And from Zero One, uh, an outstanding fifty dollars saying shoutouts to Pears and Cloud. Thank you guys for your support and getting Behemoth to SGDQ. Yeah, thank you so much again. Uh, if you are feeling so inclined. Uh, to donate, you can uh, type exclamation donate in the chat. Um, there is a cooldown on the bot, so if, someone, if it's not working for you, it was probably typed pretty recently, and that will provide you with the link to uh, send, you, send your money to help get Behemoth to SGDQ. And I think that's something that we're really looking forward to, if we can make that happen, if all of the plans come together, you know. Um, Behemoth has actually doesn't have the capability to stream, from what we understand, so it would be really interesting to be able to see him live. <laughs> exactly. Not only is it the first time that we will be seeing Behemoth play live, we'll be seeing him play live in the flesh. The first time that we have also had a top-tier European runner be able to attend and race at Super Metroid at a GDQ. Um, so that is also extremely exciting here. 
yeah, for anybody who's been paying attention to this community for any length of time, you know, th this is actually a <laughs> pretty exciting thing if we can make it happen. So we appreciate everybody's support. All right, so we got a little action headed in the Craze Lair now. And uh, really close right now between Goop and Ben. And Mishrak not far behind. Mock right behind him. And let's see if they get the quick kill. So with the quick kill here, they're going to be using uh, their super missiles to stun lock Kraid's mouth open long enough so they can actually deal all 1,000 of his health in damage um, before he raises himself up uh, and exposes the entire rest of his body, wasting a lot of time and, and, and prolonging the fight quite a bit. So we did see successful quick kills um, from uh, our first couple players here, and then wrapping it up there, um, Mock getting the Quick, last quick kill there. Doing an, a fun little uh, damage boost backwards into the drops um, to grab a couple more of those. And early on, Ben and Mock, are, or Ben and Goop rather, frames apart really. I think we're going to see a pretty tight race well into this run. Oh yeah, definitely going to be exciting to see. Um, so we are actually seeing Ben going for the Kraid E-Tank, um, as well as uh, Mishrak. It's going to be interesting to see if Mock Drums is going to grab it. Goop did actually opt to skip the Kraid E-Tank. Now, why this is, it looks like a Mock Drum, or uh, yeah, Mock Drum is actually grabbing that E-Tank. The reason why this is of note is this is not, you know, if you were to theoretically run the most efficient route, um, you know, for uh, for this any percent race, that E tank would not be picked up. Um, the reason why they're grabbing it is just for extra safety. Having having a, this that little bit of extra health for this beginning part of the game, um, not only just makes them more comfortable. Um, you know, during some boss fights, that you know that they won't die, but it also allows them to do um, str more uh, fast strats that enable them to, or the the fast strats that actually consume health, uh, like damage boosts and and more notably shine sparks. Um, so since this is the, uh, ocean fly marathon, mm -hmm. for those of you who are unaware, there is a trick, a speed trick in this game, in this route called the ocean fly. Now, uh, just before the wreck ship, there is a large room full of water that you have to traverse to act before you enter the wreck ship. There is a shine spark you can do where you charge up your speed booster and then fly across the screen, but Shine Sparks consume your health. Um, so I am I am assuming we will see all players, since this is the Ocean Fly Marathon, attempting this trick. Uh, it looks really awesome, saves quite a bit of time, so hopefully we're going to see that come out of these players. At and least one if, of them. Right, and if they don't get it, if they don't accomplish it, if they don't try it, feel free to follow them, go to their chats, and then just harass them endlessly. That would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> if they do get it, you can congratulate them. That would also be pretty nice to do. Exactly. Uh, yeah, if you are interested in continuing to see these players um, after the marathon, their names are right next to this, their streams here. Uh, make sure to follow them. Just type in twitch.tv slash and then uh, as their name as it appears on stream, and you can go ahead and give them a follow. Yeah, and actually, it was left off of the stream, but it is Ben Lake 412, it's Mishrak 109, but Mock Drums, Group Q, you can find them all on Twitch. And uh, really good guys, too, very welcoming. Good people in their chat, you'll enjoy following them. Yes, my apologies, I did not realize the numbers were excluded, but yes, they got the numbers on there. <laughs> I'm surprised I noticed that there's a lot going on here. Oh, yeah. So here we are. We're seeing our runners picking up Speed Booster. Gotta go fast, man. Yeah. All the time. This is and, looking uh, like Goop. Goop actually take it, have it, uh, 
with a pretty sizable lead here. Um, struggling though, f falling down in the double chamber here before wave beam. Um, but making it up there, it can be really difficult if you fall down, getting up to on those platforms again. Um, can be really difficult uh, because one, the platforms are really small, and two, they're moving up and down. So when they're the positions that they were in when you fell down are probably not the same positions that they're in when you're trying to jump back up. So that can definitely make it difficult to get back up there. Yeah, that's not a fun room to uh, to kind of lose focus on, and it happens quite a bit. So, yeah. but he recovered pretty well. Yes, and, definitely. And you know, we're gonna see if that skipping up the crate tank for Goop you know, has the potential to pay off for him as well, you know. These guys obviously get a little more leeway, but who gets that time lead and that time buffer? And if he's able to, you know, execute everything properly, that's also an advantage. I mean, it's still a race, so. Exactly. And so for those of you who are curious, the time differential there for grabbing, the amount of time it takes to grab the Kraid tank, you have to consider a couple of factors. There's two door transitions, each of which are approximately two, two and a half seconds long. So that's about five seconds there, just entering and exiting the room. The item fanfare is approximately six and a half seconds long. Um, so that's about like 11 and a half seconds total there. And then also the, the, t the time it takes to get through the room, maybe about like another like three to four seconds. So you're looking at about like 15 seconds to grab that Kraid tank. Yeah, and there are other hidden ways where that might affect your run as far as drops go. Um, you know, it, it, in a way, it's easier, theoretically, to have full health when you have less tanks, less drops for more, you know, less drops to fill your tanks. So that inc increases your odds of getting missiles in a lot of situations. But um, but the same can be said for, you know, you're always going to have more health if you grab the tank. So yep. it's calculated. I yeah, there's a that's a it's a good point. The way drops work in this game, um, if you have full, if you're full on something like your your health is completely full, or you have maximum ammo in in one of the you know in missiles or supers or whatever, the game is programmed to not drop any drops of that kind. So if you have full health, you will not receive any health drops, and you know exactly the same for all your other ammo as well. So red tower here, we're seeing, we're seeing from the, all these players are now in the red tower room. There at the very top, there is a series of four rippers and a shoot, a shootable block at the top. What you're going to see players attempt to do uh, is do what we call a hero shot, where they shoot straight up and follow their shot up through the tower, and it uh, goes past the rippers, um, and opens up that block, and then they just wall jump up and go right through. We see Goop actually having a really hard time getting up through there, but he does finally make it through. Um, you know, Metro is... Super Metroid, Super Metroid is a game where anything can happen, and Goop, with a size of with his sizable lead, you know, it, if you get hung up on one spot, it can definitely hurt you. I'm really enjoying how this lead has changed hands quite a few times now. Now you got Mishrak headed up the elevator towards Great Area, and he's built himself about a one room lead which is you know pretty nice yeah followed up right by ben who's uh, ascending up through the remaining air part of uh, the red tower here gonna hit the elevator in just a minute followed closely by um mock and goop who are pretty much frame for frame screen for screen pixel for pixel right now <laughs> That should probably hold true for the rest of the race. <laughs> oh, so here we go. We see we see Mishrak um, not attempting Ocean Fly here. Oh, uh, what you would see, what, so keep a close watch on uh, Ben right now. What you will see um, is in the that previous room, um, they will jump and shoot a super missile to attempt to open up the door and continue to fly through. Oh, so it looks like Ben was slightly too high there. Um, did get the door open with the super missile, but sparked too high there. So looking at... Um, Looking at mock, mock drum stream, he is setting up. He's got his super selected as well as... Um, so oh. mock drums looks like he misses it. Goop is our last chance here. Oh, uh. he was slightly too slow on his spark. If he had activated his spark slightly earlier, that super missile would not have uh, despawned before it hit the door. Very, very close. Uh, I would say Goop gave us the best chance there. He did, definitely. He was, he was very, very close. Only a couple of frames off from that... The way that uh, when projectiles work uh, in this game is if you if they travel two tiles off screen, um, they despawn. So that is what happened there. 
the super missile that Goop had shot and some of the other players as well had traveled two tiles off screen. Um, so that just means that, and then they just despawned before the door was open. So it just means they activated their spark a little bit too late. And Mishrak landed his first special beam attack, the uh, X Factor on Fantoon. Looks like Ben landed his as well. And it's really important that they get this fight done properly and quickly. And looks like Mish got it. All right. Um, so yeah, so basically what they're doing, they're just charging up their uh, wave beam. And it comes out of the consumption of a power bomb, it does what we call an X Factor. Uh, Fantoon has 12 unique patterns he can give you. So in order to be proficient at killing Fantoon in two rounds, um, players need to memorize all patterns and the movement required uh, for the X Factors to connect. So we're seeing um, lots of... of Decent X Factors going on here. Uh, ben had a really good fight, as well as Mishrak. Um, we're seeing uh, Goop and Mox struggling a little bit more, but I believe we have um, quite a few donations uh, that have come in. So if we could get some of those read right now. Yeah. Absolutely. We definitely do have quite a few of them. Let you hit the refresh page here. Uh, we did have a couple pretty sizable donations. One from I Am The Swartz for $300. Wow. Uh, All right. That's a big chip in right there. Wow, yeah. Time <laughs> SM Lurker here. Just want to help out and get one of our best runners there and show off the SM skill we all know and love to the general audiences at SGDQ. Good luck with the runs, everyone. Thank you, Schwartz. So also was... another hundred dollars from Chill Monkey. Let's get uh let's get out Euro Bro here and really make America great again for a dank SGDQ race. And it just matters for any run today. Definitely murder those animals. Thank you, Chill Monkey. I'll hand it back to you, Bob. Um, yeah, so already not even half an hour in, we are already about, if I can math right, we're already about like one third of the way to our donation wow. goal. So <laughs> just alone with that $300, that was one fifth of what we are, what we are asking to, for here to get, to get, uh, behemoth to SUDQ. So thank you so much for your generosity. Yeah. Thank um, you guys. It's, and just so you're you are aware when you do donate uh should we reach our fifteen hundred dollar goal uh your money will not be going to waste uh the any and all uh excess donations will be made to the charity um at sgdq which i believe is doctors without borders yeah in the in the past it has been doctors without borders so i believe unless they're changing it um that the rest of that money will be donated to the charity that which SGDQ chooses. Um, All right, so everybody's getting ready to get gravity suit here, and uh, Mishrak out in the early lead again. There, I am really surprised here. Still, they are like within like half a minute of each other between separating first and and the the last runners here. All um, factors considered, that is really. Pretty incredible, actually. Yeah, for all four of them, you know, even with some mediocre fan tunes and some really good fan tunes, like it's really impressive that they have all maintained a pretty close distance over yeah. this race, over the yeah. course of this race. Absolutely. So what we're going to be seeing now after the acquisition of gravity is you're going to see the players head back down through Red Tower and go towards Meridia, um, where they're going to. Some some people really dislike some runners really dislike Meridia. Um, you know, it, it's pretty. I I personally re really enjoy Meridia. I think it's it's a really technical area of the game. There's lots of really difficult tricks going on. Um, I think you know if it's done well, it can look really really good. Um, yeah, and it just and it just as as a runner, I think it, you know if you want th that feeling when you just execute Meridia like really really excellent like really really well. It just feels really good because it's just such a difficult and technical area. I was going to say that the potential to save and lose time, um, I think, really exists pretty strongly in that area. And I, I would mean, agree. You, know, you can say that for any part of the run, but uh, I think the, the level of execution that's needed in Meridia to save the most amount of time is it, a pretty high level of execution there. So you can really put some distance between yourself if that's a strong point of your run. Yeah, um, so there's there's a couple different uh, points, you know, that are most notable for a lot of 
either large amounts of time gain or uh, can go pretty poorly. First of first of all is Batu and the mini boss of Meridia. Um, you know, pretty. I wouldn't say he's the most uh, difficult to master, you know, but it can still be, if it goes wrong, it can go really wrong. Uh, in that fight, you open up with an X-Factor. Batwoon always comes out of the same hole in the wall every single time, but he can give you four different patterns. But the X-Factor is always the same, so you can always hit all four of those if you do it correctly. Um, followed up by six super missiles, and you can successfully one-round Batwoon. Um, however, if your X-Factor is slightly off, um, while there is an X-Factor particle still on the screen, you are unable to shoot or use any ammunition whatsoever. So that can definitely make the fight really, really hard. Um, do you want to talk about some of the other uh, other areas of Meridia? Well, I was just going to uh, I, I was just going to mention Full Halfy, which comes up pretty much immediately after Batwoon, two ro two rooms from Batwoon, and uh, it takes a series of really precise wall jumps, a down grab, which is you're actually manipulating Samus's hitbox, making her smaller, so she can get up on a ledge quicker, getting through this door and then sparking across the room we call the Colosseum. And uh, it's it's a pretty small frame window to execute so many inputs so quickly, and it saves a lot of time and it looks really, really nice, so... Yeah, and I'd like to, I want to cut you off there real quick. Um, sp pay special attention to Mock Drum's health here. He has a very, very small amount of health um, going into Batwoon. Botwoon, uh, his head deals 40 damage and his body does 42. So getting hit by either one of those, Mock Drums will die. Uh, his acid does uh, somewhere in the range. I, I the the actually the exact amount escapes me. It's somewhere in the range of 20. Um, so he can get hit by that acid, but uh, so we just got to see. Connects all the X factors there. He cannot run into Botwoon right now. Typically, players would have just taken the damage from Botwoon to get a clear uh, shot at his head. Um, but Botwoon, yeah. he, he does he does clear him up there. The last to finish Botwoon. So keeping an eye on Mishrak's screen. Going for the halfy more likely. There he goes. Gets it. There we go. The full halfy, uh, you see the halfy it's called, you get approximately halfway across that room, but you bonk into that uh, platform there. So keeping an eye on uh, Goop, oh, accidentally morphs there, so he's just going to spark up at the top. Looks Bobby like Goop Ben... Spark there, actually. Yeah, it looks like Ben uh, Ben gets goes for the halfy as well. I know Mock Drums definitely, he can, he's practiced the full halfy, so we're probably going to see him attempt this year. I, I would imagine that. Yeah, oh, he, he looks... bumps the door. I don't, he can, it's still possible? Yeah, that's gonna... Yeah, he was only a couple of pixels off from bonking there. It doesn't even look like the hitboxes should have collided, but the Shine Sparking hitbox is really, really awkward looking. That's a pretty consistent trick for Mach. I think, uh, you know, the, the crucible of <laughs> running a race in front of a bunch of people, you know, that does put some pressure on you, so... Exactly. Not only, you know, as I've been saying in the uh, during the tournament, like not only do races raise the nervousness and anxiety levels, but playing for so many people. How many people do we have here? Two hundred and ninety-four. A very nice. substantial <laughs> amount of people. So, shout outs to all of you guys who are here. Um, yeah, thank you everybody for coming in. Yeah, you know, of course this wouldn't be possible without all of you here. Uh, so we always we very much appreciate you. So just uh, talking a little bit about Dragon here. Um, unless, actually, let us let me just take a chance to check in here. Do we have any more donations we'd like to have read before we continue? Yes, we do. Let me tab over here and take a look. Do it. But if you still hit the refresh page, we have another $100 from Cygrade. We're doing Ooh. the uh, keyboard force as the <laughs> donation. Keyboard force? Oh, yes, man. Sir. Keyboard force. Got a couple more, $50 from Hillborn Milburn saying, Fly, you fools! <laughs> $20. $20 yes. from Oats and Goats. No comment, but thank you for the $20. And let me read one more here. And Typo saying, Thanks for the entertainment, y'all. And good luck to the runners sending us $15. Thank you, everyone, for your donations. Thank you again, guys. Really yeah, appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. Uh, jumping back to the race here, Ben nearly died. He got he got uh, what, what's called chain damage, uh, for, named pretty obviously from Dragon. When you kill Dragon, you can actually get damage multiple times at 40 damage a tick. 
uh, and he was below 40. So if he had gotten hit one more time by the chain damage, he would have died. But you're about to see the use of Blue Suit, which is uh, when you kill Dragon with the Shine Spark, it can sometimes put Samus into a glitched state where you always it, just, it thinks that you always have a Shine Spark or, or a Speed Booster Echoes, where you can pretty much just charge charge a Shine Spark wherever you want, allowing them, as you see Mock Drums now as well, to Shine Spark all the way back across the Colosseum as we call that room, um, with using the reverse full happy trick. And uh, still really close here. I mean, if anything, a, yeah. a lot of you have probably seen races before. This is pretty uncommon. And This uh, is extremely uncommon, I would say. <laughs> they are, they are yeah. still... They are still, I would approximate, within about 30 seconds from first to fourth place here. Uh, very, very close. <laughs> that is really incredible. We've almost seen a couple of deaths as well. Now that's that's common, but uh, the fact yeah. that no one has the <laughs> fact that no one has died and everyone is as close as they are is really awesome. We see oh, mock drums. Um, his movement pretty good, but not good enough to get the plasma spark. It's pretty close. He was he was pretty close there. So you're talking if this if this tight race were to maintain all the way into Torian. You're talking about the difference between a missed baby skip or getting or not getting it. I mean, and that's really for for where these runners are at. That's eh, pretty incredible. Yeah, like it could change the whole. It could change the completely swap around all of the the position the, the positioning here of this race. Looks like Goop Q has a slight lead again now. Yeah, only, uh, you know, just the Meridia Toilet ahead of Mishrak here. And then uh, as, as soon as Mishrak enters, Ben, or as soon as Mishrak <laughs> exits, Ben enters the toilet there, followed by Mach. Uh, yeah. just, about to, just about to hop in there as well. So we're going to see these players head down. They're going to grab Ice on their way to Lower Norfair. Um, ice Beam is required for a couple... Of, well, it's required for a few reasons. Uh, one of which um, is to do the Zebatite skip uh, towards the end of the run. Um, there are alternate methods that are more difficult to do, but Ice makes it really easy. It allows for a much lower ammunition count at the end of the at the end of the run as in addition to being able to damage the metroids um you freeze the metroids and then you can actually damage them with ammunition and kill them um but also it allows you for it allows you to kill the last two remaining bosses ridley and mother brain uh with only 20 charge shots um as opposed to if you did not have ice beam it would take 24 so now whereas meridia was a very like technical heavy segment where you want to do a lot of shine sparks things along those lines um lower norfair in my opinion is much more movement intensive um you know tight windows for jumps tight windows for shots uh a little less boss r yeah boss rng ridley tends to be a little more manipulable than um batuan and dragon so a little bit of a different like complexion to this next part coming up and it might you know change times again for everybody exactly and you make a good point you know that the the movement is a bit more tight you know uh and the stakes consequently are higher as well if yeah. there is any movement screwed up nearly every single enemy in lower warfare will be if they are hit by the enemy they will be getting dealt 50 points of damage uh which is pretty sizable especially um for you know the amount of health that they have, most players, uh, we see all players except for Goop, um, since he did not grab the Crady tank. They have four energy tanks, so that's pretty that's pretty safe. Most of them will be feeling pretty comfortable uh, moving along here. But again, you know that's quite a bit of damage. Something tells me that Goop, if he has a successful lower Norfair and Ridley fight, will probably be grabbing that Ridley tank, and you know that's not a bad strategy either. It's really not. Being able to have that instant health refill plus a little bit of extra health for the remainder and exit of Lore and Warfare is always nice to have. Absolutely.
So Mishrak and Goop are separated by a battle room. And it looks like yeah, Goop and Ben are asleep. separated. Yeah, just Same. by a battle room. Missing the, uh, the, the chronic boost. Some of these players, I don't think any, I didn't, I actually, I missed if anybody did get it. I did see a couple players not get it. Uh, getting through the lava dive there, you saw some uh, mock drums. Making it through kind of slow, uh, having to go through with space jump. With lava, lava does not allow you to gain any uh, horizontal speed. Um, the way that you can actually do that, though, is use uh, a damage boost from the previous room off of the little uh, viola, the little blue fuzzy guy, um, to get yourself through that room uh, horizontally very quickly. And all of the guys having trouble with fast pillars as of right now, so let's see what mock drums can do. I can I can feel the salt just through the run. Yeah, so he <laughs> is he's opting to go for a uh, blue blue suit flying through there. Um so that's good. So it's saving power bombs. It's also conserving health. Um you players can shine choose to shine spark through there, uh, you know, of course at the cost of health. So some players decide to go a little bit safer and just uh, jump through there with space jump and blue suit. So, as far as strategy goes, I always tend to think of Mishrak as a more conservative player, and I think that's where something like being more conservative is paying off right now for Mish. Um, as you can see, he hasn't made many mistakes, and he's taken a, a pretty nice lead now for the moment. And he still has a very, very nice amount of health. Yeah, um, As well as Mo Mock Drums is completely full, so he is excellent on health. But if you look at uh, Ben, he is... Run a little bit low, but it's not anything to get concerned about yet. Right. All right, we got Mishrak entering Ridley. And this becomes a pretty fun fight, the better you get at it. Yep. Um, so what, like, like we were saying earlier, it's going to take 20 charged Ice Wave Plasma shots to kill Ridley. Now, the deal with Ridley here, uh, he, unlike the other bosses that we've seen, will not die immediately once his health reaches zero. Uh, he will still fly around and try and swoop around and hit you with his tail or whatever and kill you, which he can still do. He can still kill you even after his health reaches zero. So what players will do is they will actually count their shots. They will count and wait until they have hit him with 20 charged shots and then they will attempt to get grabbed in his claws. What this does is that actually activates his death animation. Um, so that ends the fight quicker that way. But more quickly, excuse me. Um, so that, so that's, you will see an intentional grab by them right there. You there saw you Mishrak go. got knocked up, damage boosted by the tail up into Ridley's uh, claws. It looks like Mishrak is positioning himself on the left side of the platform to grab the drops and just get out of there. He's not going to grab the Ridley tank. Um, you know, he's still got a very, very nice amount of health, so really no reason at all for him to grab that. Um, yeah. Everything goes well, Mish should be in very good shape headed into Torian. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Goop. Goop and uh, Ben killing really at nearly the same moment here, so they are right on, right behind each other. Mishrak, yeah. meanwhile, just flying out of Norfair. Um, so we can see Ridley's trying to pick up Mach there, and there he goes. Um, and we so got Goop also, and Ben. Both getting the E tank. Which, yep. Uh, so we're gonna see uh, Goop. Goop. We kind of expected it from just so we can have that one extra safety, um, which is gonna play one additional role uh, later on in the Mother Brain fight. We see Mock Drums not grabbing that E tank. Um, he is just gonna go ahead and peace on out of the Norfair. Um, so you wanna during the Mother Brain fight, do you wanna mention why the E tank is uh, helpful? Oh man, for a bevy of reasons, I guess. You know, <laughs> I mean. Mother Brain has a couple, a couple attacks that can cause chain damage. She's got a catch-up attack, which is basically a death beam. If you get hit once by that, you can more or less call it a run. Um, but on top of that, there is damage headed towards Mother Brain. If you have any trouble with the Zeb skip, which is a trick that you'll be seeing a little later, um, if you fall into the lava, all of these little things take damage and then you might be done in by one hit from Mother Brain, and that can be the end of your run. So, these four, this fourth tank, and in Ben's case, fifth tank, is going to help, like immensely. So, 
yeah, the the reason why why Kojak is saying if you're if you're taking too much damage, just the run is over. Um, the reason for that is Mother Brain. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the game, um, the reason for that is Mother Brain has a scripted rainbow beam attack where she hits you um, with this rainbow beam, and it does 300 damage to you. There is no way to avoid it. That's why we we say scripted because you cannot avoid it uh, without the use of major glitches. Um, so what these players have to do is they have to be able to kill the first and second phases of Mother Brain and remain above 300 energy. Um, so if these players, none of these players got any extra tanks and they just went with the normal three, uh, they would have nine hundred or they'd have 98 energy at most to to of of leeway um, while fighting Mother Brain. But these players did grab extra extra E-Tanks to kind of help mitigate that. Um, namely, the number one cause for an ended run would be the uh, the Ketchup Beam, as uh, Kojak alluded to. Um, it's just a red beam of death uh, that for every time it hits you, it does 100 damage. So if these players went in with just three E-Tanks, one hit from the Ketchup Beam is death. Uh, so, And the Ketchup Beam also has the potential. It is uh, worthy of note. The Ketchup Beam has potential to hit multiple times since the, the beam itself has multiple hitboxes. If more than one of those hitboxes collides with Samus on the same frame, it will do each of those hit each of those hitboxes will do its 100 points of damage. So um, it could do upwards of you know like 300, 400 damage depending how many of those hitboxes hit you. Um, so Mishrak. it is a very, very dangerous thing. Mishrax put himself in a really good position here. He has built a pretty nice lead towards the end. The rest of these guys are all right on the same screen, as, as a matter of fact. So, And they're a, about 45 seconds behind Mishrak right now. So, But we've still got the baby skip. We've still got Mother Brain. It's still yeah. a race, but Mishrak has put himself in a very good position. Yeah, he is. The, uh, these, the rest of the three players are very close behind. Mishrak is, very, is well in the lead here. It, additionally, he has a very good ammo count. Um, ammo is another thing that it's really important to pay attention to. Mother Brain 1, the very first phase when the brain is in the glass, can only be damaged by ammunition. So the players need to make sure that they have proper amount of ammunition um, after killing the Metroid to be able to kill Mother Brain 1. Uh, if they do the, perform the Zebatite skip um, and then they start to use their ammunition, um, on Mother Brain, and they do run out. It is very difficult to get back through. Not very many players are aware of the way to, to get back through the Zebatite. Um, I am not, for one. I know there is a way, but uh, it's pretty much that's pretty much game over at that point um, because these players do not have enough missiles alone to uh, complete to, to kill Mother Brain. They, if they use their super missiles, you cannot get those back once you have uh, gone to. Uh, once you have gone past the the large baby Metroid, so um, so Mishrak, be... uh, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, Mishrak it's okay. Just entered Golden Four, and um, all the rest of the runners are headed here right before Torian. So I was thinking maybe if Shavaris had any donations to read, yeah. or if he wanted to also mention maybe what's coming up next. Absolutely. Next up, we have a 100% race using the old route. If you people have watched those, you know what the new route 100% is. But we're going to be doing the old route for this coming race between EDU 207 Sweetnam, Wild Anaconda 69, which is the uh, voice you hear right now. Uh, not right now, because that's my voice. <laughs> and also Oats and Goats. So that's coming up next. But in the meantime, some donations to read off. We have a $5 from Southern Bell Genius. says, kicking this, right, kicking this off right with a little sum sum. Seems good. Love y'all. Also from Cherry Point, take my Swedish money. Ten dollars from him. Of course, Behemoth must go to SGDQ. And uh, we had a one dollar donation from Ice Beam saying, "I make the run so much faster." <laughs> <laughs> good work, Ice Beam. Thank you uh, to everybody. And another twenty from Random Encounter Band saying, "Behemoth in the flesh for SGDQ. Sign me up." Oh, Thank yeah. you guys for your donations. All right, so Mishrak, again, he's out in front, and it looks like he is pretty well set up headed into the last Metroid room. And this is where the drops become important. 
he's going to want to enter there with ideally 20 missiles and 10 super missiles through this door. And he's got and 20 and 9, or 20 and 10 it. rather. Yep, and so uh, it's really, the, in order to not have to go back and refill missiles before they go fight Mother Brain, um, 20 and 9 or 20 and 10 is enough to get through there um, and kill Mother Brain 1. If they have any less than that, um, they will not actually be able to go through without farming. So the very absolute bare minimum is 20 and 6 that these players can go through. If a player ends up with 20 and 6, Oh, yeah, be very mindful of uh, Ben's ammo count. Only two supers with the three, uh, uh, two Metroid rooms remaining. Not ooh, and Mishrak got grabbed by the baby. So that basically evened up this race as of right now. That is going to even up the race, but I'm a little bit concerned if Ben does not farm these Metroids and leave before. It looks like he's just going to go for it. Oof. Oh, never mind. Oh, never wait mind. A he's gonna. He is gonna. Oh, just kidding. He is gonna. I, he really should not be killing all these Metroids right here, because if he does not get the drops that he needs, he is going to be in big trouble. He needs at least one Super Missile, but even if he just gets the one, he's going to be really far behind here. So, okay, so he does. He got two, so he's going to need to open two Missile Doors. Mog Drum just gets the skip, and that's going to catch him right up to, to Mishrak. And oh, no! got grabbed through the transition. Got grabbed through the, oh, that's awful, because that's going to... He's going to be forced to save and reset to get rid of these Metroid deceleration physics. These will persist. It basically, the game believes that the Metroid is attached to you at all times until you save and reset. So this is approximately the same amount of time loss um, if you do miss the skip. Oh, so maybe Mark did get grabbed. Did I miss something there? All right, so we avoided map stations. We got one save station. All in all, successful run. Mishrak takes down Mother Brain 1. And if he can get through Mother Brain 2 cleanly, it looks like he's going to take it. And I don't think Mish was necessarily considered um, the foregone winner of this race. So. Oh, Mach is giving me some scares here. So, so there's those little uh, turrets shooting... Um, their little bullets at uh -oh. Mach right now. He needs to be very careful not to have any more of his shots blocked by those. Otherwise, he will not be able to take out Mother Brain, but he does, thankfully. Um, so we see Ben here had to open up the Red Door and the Ghidorah with missiles. So now he has to go back and refill both his missiles and, uh, and his health here because of his low um, ammunition count. Um, we see Goop finishing up Mother Brain uh, 1 right there. Not a problem. So again, Mother Brain is going to take 20 charged Ice Waves uh, Plasma shots here. Again, be play, pay close attention to their health. Um, if they drop below 300 before the... Ooh, oh! Box drums! Wow, okay. What a dodge. So, some players... Um, not not in his case, but it just reminds me of some players uh, opt to actually take damage from other damage sources, like a, a bomb or something that Mother Brain drops, if they know a catch-up is coming, so that they can use the invulnerability frames to go through the catch-up. Yeah. Um, so it looks like, and you see players damaging themselves down uh, to just above 300. Uh, that is to prevent Mother Brain from attacking them can, uh, after the the Rainbow Beam, because she attacks you until you are below 100 health. Um, so she. By damaging yourself beforehand, you're saving yourself just a little bit of time there. Um, we nice. did not see mock drums do that. Uh, the problem with that is there's a very low chance, but it is possible that if you don't damage yourself down and the Mother Brain has to attack you, it is very possible she can combo you in such a way that you do die. Um, it is very, very unlikely, but it is still a possibility. And it seems like anything that's possible in this game can and will happen eventually. So you see Mish here just about to start Mother Brain 3. Let's a little bit close position. there. But uh looks like he should still he should be fine. Yeah. And it looks like Ben Finishing up Mother Brain 2. Yep, alright. So Ben is through Mother Brain 2. Damage himself as well. Mishrak cleaning up Mother Brain 3. Now I just got the escape left. 
And it's worth noting that uh, we might have a sub-50 run here from Mishrat. It's going to be very oh, yeah. close. Yep, definitely. So we're going to see uh, if there's any animals saved. The saving or killing the animals is up to each runner's discretion. Um, there is no incentive or anything for that that we've got going on during this marathon, so it's up to each runner. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and assume that since there is nothing like that, they are going to be killing them. My it's philosophy certain. is uh, save a real animal. Yes. We see Mishrak struggling a little bit in uh, room four. Or three, rather, sorry, of the escape. Followed closely by Mach here, who's just starting the escape. So we actually saw some really quality play here today. I mean, sub-50 pace for Mishrak and just above 50 for the rest of the runners. That's a, that's a pretty good run especially considering the circumstances and safety strats and every, everything that's been put into consideration. Yeah, um, and so it looks like right here, GG from G -G Mishrak. Mishrak. Congratulations, Wonderful. Mishrak. Taking first place, um, and to go along with, you know, we ha yeah, what you were saying, we have been seeing really excellent play, really solid play from all of these runners here. Not to discount um, Ben Lake at all, he was playing just as well as each of these players, and then at the end just got screwed over by drops through no fault of his own. Um, yeah. So that unfortunately all these players, happens sometimes. Yeah, sometimes it happens, and you know, at least he he made it work you know and that just speaks to his you know level as a player you know understanding what he needs to do to get the drops that he needs and and knowing what he can make it through with so you know Mock congrats to all of these runner there. yep mox drums finishing up there and just what really close behind coming in goop finishing with a third place finish wow what an goop. excellent race this was this was absolutely this was... phenomenal wonderful way to kick off this marathon yeah, man, you're not kidding. This was great. This was really good. And uh, no animals saved from our first three finishers. So we are going to see. We're going to wait and see what uh, Ben decides to do here. Certainly hoping it is uh, opting for the barbecue. They come back when you reset the console. There was no reason to save them. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a that, that's I like I like that one. That's I like I like that one. Then getting the climb spark. Then getting the climb spark. Let's yeah, see how he does in climb. I'm sorry. Just making his way back. Oh, yeah, I was just I was just going off you saying yeah, just making his way up through here. <laughs> Um, just traveling right over the animals. Yep, there he goes. Okay, no animals were saved today, but that's okay because they're not real. <laughs> and then GG Ben, congratulations! Awesome job to all these players. Good job, guys. That was awesome. Get off this marathon with a wonderful race. Um, I do have to go. Uh, as Stray mentioned, I am starting in the next in the 100% race so yeah, I will see you guys line. there thank you for uh, thank you and excellent job thank you for allowing me to commentate with you I will see you guys next mission thank you very much wild it was awesome my pleasure and, uh, you know thank you to the runners to the organizers this was a lot of fun and uh, shout outs to all the runners on here these are some of the guys that I came up with when I started running so it's cool to see them all Come out here and have it put on a good performance. And thanks to everybody in chat. Great time. Thank you, Wild Anaconda and Kojak. Let's give some clappers to our commentators and to our runners. If you want to follow any of the runners that we just saw in our amazing race, be sure to check out their Twitch channels there. Follow them. They do Super Metroid all the time. So be sure to check them out. Up next. We have our 100% old route race between EDU 207, Sweetenham, Wild Anaconda 69, and Oats and Goats. So stay tuned for that. 
In the meantime, I'm going to read off some of our donations that we still have while we're waiting for the Deer Force. We have a $10 from Bob Oblio saying, I'm excited to see a variety of the Super Metroid speed running on top of our normal 80% runs. Good luck to all the runners. Another $10 from Cardweaver saying, part now and part when Emma... <laughs> And Metroid MST apparently messes up. <laughs> Another $10 from Iowa Hawk says, I'm glad to support the Super Metroid community however I can for all the entertainment it has given me. Thank you, Stray, and all the others for organizing Oceanfly 2016, and shout out to the Goat Pen. And a good $20 from BQ saying, Take with the work we off this year for SGDQ again. Behemoth attending? Heck yeah, looking forward to that. Metroid MST, 